Moving into a new assignment here for computer animation, what we're going to be working on today is creating a looping background scene. So utilizing things like motion tweens and the pen tool to uh, draw these different layers um, and make them move uh, at slightly different rates um, by using a little bit of a trick by making them different sizes. So what you'll see here is we have a few different layers. Uh, we have a foreground, a middle ground, and then a background layer of kind of this atmospheric uh, texture. And so uh, we'll go ahead and get started in starting a new project here. And we want to make this an action skip 3.0. And what we'll do is start by making our layers. So what we'll want is layer 1 to be our foreground. F-O-R-E ground. Uh, we'll make layer 2 our midground. We could just call it mid. And layer 3 to be our background. Okay, and now actually I'm just realizing I have these in the wrong order. If we want the foreground to be on top, because that is going to be what is in the front, and then the uh, midground and background to be in back, as that those are going to be below. Okay, so starting on this first uh, keyframe here, I'm going to use my pen tool and go ahead and make kind of a uh, jagged, kind of rocky-ish line going across here, and don't get too caught up in your uh, spots where you put down your uh, anchor points because you can always adjust those later on. Um, now I have this black outline here. I'm going to go ahead and choose a fill color as kind of like a tannish color. Actually what I was going to do is create a gradient to fill this. Um, so what I'm actually going to do is just select all of this um, by clicking on that keyframe and then just going to hold shift and click on the middle uh, of this shape. I want to take out this outline um, so I'm going to just press delete there and now what I'm going to do is actually take this um, selection of my foreground kind of rocks and I'm going to change this fill to a linear gradient up in my color palette menu. This is actually a pretty good gradient for this that I already had um, kind of going from like a light uh, light tannish color, light yellow, light tannish color, um, to maybe a little bit more of kind of a, a little bit darker peach kind of tan color. Nice. That is pretty good right there. Um, and once you have that kind of a gradient um, filling, um, what I'm going to do is use my gradient transform tool, which is behind our free transform tool. So if you click and hold, we can get our gradient transform tool. And if I click on this gradient now, what I want to do is actually rotate this um, so that the lighter color, um, it's going from dark to light, okay? So there we go. Now that is pretty much set. Um, what I'm also going to do is just, oops, I was just going to kind of play with a little bit of the positioning of some of these. Some of those were a little bit too uh, straight. We want to kind of make some variety in the angles here. We don't want it to be too uniform going all the way across, but kind of mix up the points and the levels here as they go across. All right, so that works pretty well. Um, what we want to do with this is once you have it done, we want to convert it to a graphic. So we'll press F8 on our keyboard and we'll call this uh, rocks. And say OK. Now what we'll want to do is actually double over this graphic. Um, so what we'll do is just go ahead and hold, you could hold the option key on your keyboard, click and drag um, on that graphic to actually copy another and then we'll just move it over here and try and make this uh, line up with the other graphic. Now what we'll want to do is edit this so that they really line up at the beginning and end. Um, and if we edit one of our graphics it will go ahead and change the other one. So if I double click on this uh, first rock graphic here and um, I just want to change this point so that it matches up here with this one. And I'm also going to pull this point down so that it lines up with this angle right here. So um, if I zoom in a little bit, just trying to get these to line up better. Actually, what I could do is go back and pull this first point here pull that over a little bit and when we go back see how that closed that gap it's because it actually changed this graphic over here because they're both mirrors of the same thing so now I can take this corner maybe try and get it to line up good on that side 
and there we go. So once those uh, line up, and it looks like that will be kind of smooth going across, there may be a little bit of space in there. It's hard to tell. When I zoom out, it looks like there is. But uh, we'll see. If we have to uh, kind of adjust that later, we can come back to it. So now I'm going to go back out to my scene. And so on our main scene again, what we should have is uh, these two kind of rock graphics uh, going back and back to back together on uh, our foreground layer. So now what we'll go with is we'll work on the middle ground area, which is going to be more of kind of like a hilly shape. Again, I'm going to take my pen tool and I'm going to just go ahead and draw um, a kind of a small hill that only goes about halfway across my stage. So, you know, just going to make a couple points here and then I'm going to make this uh, come all the way down to the bottom here, kind of lining up with my other graphic and then closing that, okay? And so uh, what this shape, what I'll want to fill that with is uh, more of a greenish tone. And so I will take maybe this green right here and fill in that shape. Again, I'm gonna wanna do the same trick. Um, what I'm gonna do is actually turn off the visibility on this foreground layer so I can just see my hill shape um, and work on this by itself. I'll click on this first keyframe here, hold shift and click to unselect the middle of this pen shape, and then press delete again to delete that outline. Um, just looks a little bit cleaner without the outlines in this in particular animation for the background. Um, so what I want to do now is, uh, again, I'm going to convert this shape into a graphic, okay? Before I do any kind of uh, manipulating to this graphic, I want to make sure that it's uh, it's been made into a, converted to a graphic first. So actually what I'll do now is, um, again, before I do that, I need to go ahead and copy this over. So holding the option key and clicking and dragging that uh, graphic over a little bit. Now what I can do is try and make these line up correctly. I'm just gonna scooch that a little bit. Okay, so if I double click on this graphic here, what I can see is that I need to move, move this corner a little bit, see how that adjusted. And now that is going a little bit straighter there. What I might do also is move this bottom corner a little bit there and see how it's adjusting them both at the same time because they are just both copies of the same uh, graphic. So now I can do is take and adjust this point just gonna try and see if I can make these line up a little bit better. That looks pretty good. Um, I think that those will line up right into each other. The other thing now I can do is kind of bend this line a little bit so that it looks a little more like a hill. All right, so there we go. That looks pretty good. Maybe I'll just take it and adjust this point just a little bit there. Awesome. So I got a little bit of a gap in there, but I can adjust that um, back on my main scene. So I'm just going to take this graphic and just nudge it once or twice with my keyboard, just pressing the arrow key on my keyboard to kind of nudge it into place. Um, I think that maybe I will edit this just a little bit more, just nudging it over there. Because when I look at this uh, space here, I have that little weird lip. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on this graphic and adjust that just a little bit so that now it looks a little bit smoother um, there. And then we're actually going to take and copy yet a third copy of this graphic and just stitch it onto the end there. So now we've got three. What we should have, if I zoom out a little bit here, we'll turn this rock graphic back on. What I should have is the two rock graphics and then the three uh, middle ground graphics um, going along the inside there. Um, so now what I'll do is I'll turn off visibility on both of those. I'm going to draw one final shape kind of to be uh, in the background here. Again, using the pen tool, I'm going to just kind of make a, a square that just kind of cuts off uh, the top area of the stage. And I'm going to fill this color just kind of like a light bluish tint. And again, you need to use the same trick to kind of delete the outlines. Um, I could have selected the, uh, the no stroke option on here. Um, also is another way to do it. So if you just have that keyframe selected and then just go to no stroke, then we are all good. Okay, so let's, uh, what I was also going to do to this shape is just kind of curve it a little bit. 
kind of makes it look like there's a difference between the uh, kind of like the top of the sky and then uh, the middle kind of range of the sky too. Um, so next, actually, I am going to give the uh, the stage itself a color, maybe a darker blue here. And now we just have a couple varieties in the, uh, the tints and shades going on of the, uh, the sky there. So now that we kind of have our drawing all done, we have foreground with two graphics, a middle ground with three graphics. The background, we can leave a raw graphic because we're not going to apply any tweens uh, actually to that. Um, but now what we need to do is take both of these while they're selected. I'm actually going to just scooch this one over a little bit because when I'm looking at it from back here, I could see a little bit of space. It's funny how that goes away when you zoom in, but um, just to be sure. So I just nudge those together. I'm going to select both of these and press F8 again. Okay. So now what I'm, this is going to be is going to be the foreground. I'm going to call that my foreground graphic. And see how that now combined those both together into one larger graphic? I'm going to do the same thing with this uh, middle ground hills, um, selecting all three by holding the shift key and then clicking on another one. F8, I'm going to call this the mid graphic. And actually, I think I might want to take and adjust just the size of this a little bit. I'm going to take my free transform tool back. Um, and actually what I think I may do to this now, and I can edit this um, at any point really, is the uh, coloring of this. It's a little bit um, stagnant. I actually want this to be a gradient, just like I did with my foreground shape here. Um, so, um, actually, back to the scene, I'm going to go to this uh, the hill graphic, and when I double click inside that, you'll see there are the three graphics that we originally started with. Now, if I go ahead inside of this, I can actually edit this graphic, which will change all three of these at once. Um, so what I can do is go ahead and go to fill, and I can choose a linear gradient here, and it's gonna go by automatically uh, taking the last gradient I did. I'm instead going to change these colors to more greenish tones. So I'll take kind of like a lighter green on one side, and then on the other side, I'll click here and make this into a darker green on this side. Okay, so uh, once you have a gradient going there, we'll actually want to go back to our gradient transform tool. And I'm going to just shift this around so the light green's on top, dark green is on the bottom. All right, and see how it changed it to all of our graphics going along because each one of these is just a copy of this one right here. Um, so now what you'll see is see we're on the hill um, in the middle on the scene. So now when we look at this, uh, it's just a little bit better dimension going between the hills and the, uh, the rocks and um, the background there. So I actually think I'm going to just slightly edit uh, this graphic as well. Again, double clicking, and now I'm going to make sure that this is, in fact, a linear gradient. I think that I can make this light tone a little bit lighter is what I'm going to do to try and get a better uh, effect of this gradient filling. And maybe make this side a little bit darker. So what I may need to look at, actually, is which way this gradient is filling. So I think maybe what I want is instead, yeah, there we go. So the lighter color on the top, darker color on the bottom. I think that that just uh, gives us a little bit better look. There we go. So now what we'll do is we're going to add some tweens. So we have the whole background drawn, okay? So we have a foreground, middle ground, background. What we'll do is go out to 150 frames. So I'm just scrolling sideways here, going to 150, going to hold shift, click on the uh, keyframes here, and then press the F6 key to create new keyframes right along that ending point. Um, then what I can do is I'm going to take my foreground and I'm just going to nudge using my keyboard and holding the shift key. And I'm just going to nudge this all the way over to that side. Again, I'm going to take my middle keyframe and just nudge this all the way over so that it lines up there. And now what we'll need to do is just add in a couple motion tweens. So if I right click here, create a motion tween, 
If I right click in the middle here on the foreground layer, create a motion tween. Um, actually, I think, yep, so it did seem like those added in. Let's see if they run when I test. Nope, okay, so I'm gonna have to actually undo those motion tweens really quick. Um, as motion tweens have changed, uh, right, I was going to remove motion here, um, not refine, but remove motion. Um, so there was a couple of slight changes to, and I'm going to also clear these keyframes to the way that motion tweens work in Adobe Animate CC. Um, so we're gonna add these motion tweens actually before we do that keyframing part. So uh, let's go ahead and just add motion tweens to both the foreground and middle ground layers. And then I'll go ahead and add uh, the F6 keyframes at the very end of that line after that step. Okay, so a little bit uh, different way of doing things. Now I'm gonna go ahead and move this over. You can see the line being drawn, so that tells me that the motion tween is being applied. This line right here is what I was referring to, and um, I'll do the same thing. Actually, just gonna make sure I'm clicking just on this keyframe um, with the middle ground layer. There we go. So um, you can see the motion path kind of being drawn uh, there along that. A um, little bit different in older versions of Adobe Flash, there would be a line drawn in this motion tween, but let's run this uh, graphic and what we can see is that, okay, so I've got a couple little things. I can maybe move my hill graphics a little bit closer together there. Um, this is moving just fine. It's moving the front at a little bit quicker pace than the middle ground creates more of an effect, a realistic effect, as that's what would be happening um, as far as the perspective goes. Um, but what I was going to say is I'm just going to go inside of this graphic really quickly. I think what was happening is that I want to move that layer just a smidge over. So let's run this test again see how I moved that connection uh, just a smidge and now that we can see um, now we can see that there's no line kind of flashing there. Um, I do see a slight jump in the back of this middle ground animation. The foreground seems to smoothly keep running but um, what we want to do is make sure so last thing before we call it quits here is that on this middle ground layer that we have the same cutoff point right here at the edge that is happening um, when it starts. Okay, so at the finish here, what does it look like at the beginning? That's the one thing, so it's right about at the uptick of that hill. So if we look at the end here, okay, we might be able to move this just a little bit further along. Okay, so if we play this back again, let's see if we see the jump this time. It might not be as much, maybe a little smaller, but that can take some playing with. Just a slight jump there still, so we could uh, tweak it just a little bit further maybe. Um, but again, just one of those little things that you'll just need to adjust. Um, a little bit of trial and error before you figure out how you got it just right. So um, again, I saw a little bit of jump, but I will keep playing with it. Um, I hope you have uh, lots of luck and... Um, create some good things here.